Eagles Entertainment. Eagle Eye in the Sky is fueled by Gatorade, the official sports drink of the Philadelphia Eagles. Anything that move. I don't care who it is. Let's go. Give me everything you got. Play fast, play hard. Let's beat these boys tonight in their house. It's party time. It's party time. Let's go. Touchdown! You're listening to the Eagle Eye in the Sky podcast. Now here's your host, Brand Duffy. That's right, another week, and we are talking blocking schemes and O-line play as the Eagle Eye in the Sky podcast, fueled by Gatorade, continues. I'm Fran Duffy, and as always, I think we've got a great show for you here on episode number 244. At the top of this week's show, we've got Chalk Talk, where I chat with a couple of guests this week. First up, I was really excited to sit down and talk with Eagles offensive line coach and run game coordinator Jeff Stoutland. Now, this interview is a part of a new series that we're actually debuting later this week, Thursday, May 21st at noon on the Eagles YouTube page. Make sure you go and check out our Coaches Masterclass series presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Every week over the next few weeks, I'll be sitting down with a member of the Eagles coaching staff and just talking ball. I'll pick a topic that is specific to the position that that coach works with, and we'll just watch some film. We'll break down some of the subtleties of the topic, and to kick things off, I talked with Coach Dotland about the differences between zone blocking schemes and gap blocking schemes in the run game. Coach was really excited to talk about it, and I'll put a big chunk of that conversation into this episode. Obviously, very video-centric, so not all of it would be able to work here on the podcast, but cut a bunch of chunks out, and we put it here at the very top of the show. After that, I wanted to roll out a conversation, kind of stay on theme here with the offensive line and trench play, a talk that I had with an NFL legend, one of the best linemen to play this game, certainly in recent memory, a 13-time Pro Bowl offensive guard in Will Shields. I caught up with Will down at the Shrine Bowl in January, and we talked about all things offensive line play, a lot of traits, practice habits, things like that. Really fun discussion. So this is going to be a lot of trench talk in this week's episode, but let's not waste any more time. Let's dive into it now. It's time for Jeff Stoutland in Chalk Talk. Let's get down to business. It's time for Chalk Talk. Well, really happy to be joined by Eagles offensive line coach Jeff Stoutland. Coach, really excited to kind of dive into some run schemes here and talk about the differences between zone blocking and gap scheme blocking. And with the help of some film here, excited for you to kind of go through some coaching points and uh, just basically give fans an idea of what it looks like. And we'll start with, with zone schemes. I guess before we get into the film, what is the goal of a, of a typical zone blocking scheme? What does it look like and what is the goal? Well, first, I'm excited to do this for you because, number one, we've all been locked down. Hopefully everybody's taking care of their families. Everybody's staying safe. And to be able to, to coach, this is what we do, um, you know, it's, it's exciting. It's fun. And so I'm excited to be able to share some of this information with the fans, hopefully everybody in Philadelphia, and all our fans all over the, the world are being safe and, and taking care of themselves. And so this is just maybe something that will uh, they have some time to enjoy some, some fan football here. So the first thing that I want everybody to understand is when you are preparing to run the ball and building a game plan, the most important factor is when I'm teaching the offensive line how to surface blocks, When I mean surfacing blocks, what part of your body are you using to strike the defender? Now, there's all kinds of rules now. There's there's many, many rules. Now, the good news is the way we teach it here in Philadelphia, we use what's called the flipper technique, where you'll see on the film, you'll see a lot of times that they're using their arm, their shoulder, and then you'll see the trail player coming in with two hands and punching. So there's no face, head any of that type of stuff going on keeps our players safe, extremely safe. I've always taught it that way. Uh, I think it's more effective that way. And you'll see some of this uh, being replicated on the film here. So the other thing that I need you to understand is what is the matchup situation? I think that's really important. When you're running a gap scheme play, you're most of the time you're running it towards the tight end in the direction of our tight end. When you're running a zone scheme, majority of the time, the ball begins or starts away from the tight end. So what does that matchup look like on film? Okay, these are these are very important factors. The other thing I'm looking for is how fast are the linebackers running downhill into their gaps? I coached defense many years before I started on the offensive side. I played defense. I played linebacker. 
So I have a really good feel of what they're teaching the defensive players to do and how quickly they are reacting. Everybody's different. So to watch the film, to analyze the film uh, before you build a game plan to decide whether a, a zone scheme is a better play, a gap scheme. Sometimes they complement each other. I'm going to show you how they complement each other so well. So here you see the combination block between the center and the right guard. Brooks is using the inside portion of his body to surface the block, whereas Kelsey is coming in with two hands. He, he's getting behind it as though he were pushing a Volkswagen up the hill. He's getting directly behind that block. I use these uh, visual aids for the players. So I say to the player, I say to Jason Kelsey, I say, Jason, if you're going to push a car up a hill, are you going to do it from the quarter panel? Are you going to get from the side of the car? Are you going to get directly behind that car to get your maximum torque and push? And I think that helps a player kind of understand what she does a tremendous job here, getting directly behind that block. And so what happens is, and now you see Isaac on the left guard, He's surfacing the block with the left side of his body. And what that does is it gives surface for Jason Peters to get in. There's something for him to strike now. This is not easy stuff. This is stuff that has to be practiced, drilled, constantly footwork to put yourself in a position to strike, to surface the block, whereas Jason Peters has something to hit when he comes behind. So all this stuff is detailed out. The more times you do it, the better you, you, you are at it. What happens to the linebackers here, everybody on defense has a gap to fill to stop the run. Now, they also are in a conflict with if you play action past them, they have to stop, they redirect, they have to drop out of there. That's why every run play that we have in our playbook, there is a play action pass that is a replica. It looks exactly the same as the run. And to be effective in play, you know, to be effective in a run game, you have to be great at the play action. I think Carson Wentz is tremendous at play action pass, and he loves he loves the concept. And so you have to make sure that when you build them, they are exactly the same. A lot of this is going on the tight end. A lot of the pressure uh, points are being put emphasis is putting on that particular block. The angle of departure that you take has to marry the running back. So if you look at the offensive line on the zone play, okay, the offensive line shoulders, their angle that they take should marry that running back's angle of departure. And that's really synchronized football when you do that. When your offensive line and they're taking the same departure angle as that back, now you're pretty synchronized. Now, if you run the mid zone play, that, that all changes too. The departure angles all change. The running back's angle changes. And to me, it has to be all synchronized. Coach, without giving away anything that's specific to, to the Eagles scheme, what is it that most teams, when they're trying to figure out, they're lining up? Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not going to give anything away. <laughs> to hurt the but I do have an obligation to teach and explain and uh, do the very best I can for our fans. Our fans are the best fans in the world. I'll do anything for them. I just don't want to give anything away to our opponent. In this league, every every inch matters. Trust me. Of course. You're lining up. How do those guys know pre-snap? Here's who I'm going to block. And when after the, the snap and guys move and they change gaps, you know, if there's a slant along the defensive line, how do they account for that uh, on the move on the fly? Well, the uncovered what I refer to as the uncovered lineman and the covered lineman. In that picture, Isaac was the covered lineman. Jason Kelsey was the uncovered lineman. Okay, so uh, each of those positions has a specific job that they're being required to do for that occasion. So Isaac knows the departure angle and the spot he needs to be at, knowing that Jason Kelsey's coming at full speed and he's covered to his inside. He has in his mind, he has this picture. I know my spot where I got to be at. I know I have to give enough surface for Jason Kelsey to hit. So he goes to that spot. The defender uh, uh, steps towards him. The two of them get into the block, and now the linebacker jumps backside. Kelsey does a great job with his eyes. The other thing I haven't talked about is, okay, we got to have great eyes. I call them bug's eyes. So if we had bug's eyes, our eyes would be the size of bowling balls. Okay, so we talk about eyes 
we cannot have eye violation. You need to know where your eyes need to be. Each player, if you're the covered player or the uncovered player, I give them targets and I give them spots that their eyes need to be in. So when situations like this happen, they're quick to react. The next question I've got is the, the difference between an inside zone and an outside zone. You alluded to, to mid zone as well. Can you just quickly just paint the picture for fans? Or what is the difference between inside zone, outside zone, and then mid zone as well? We can do this out of uh, from underneath the center, or we can do this from the shotgun. But the difference is the departure angle of the running back. Okay, the back would not be working up into the line of scrimmage like this. He would be on a flatter path. Well, if the running back's on the flatter path, then the offensive line has to replicate and mirror the angle of the running back for this to be a successful play. And how often do you guys rep the – because it's, it's like synchronized swimming, those guys working together uh, on those double teams. How often do you guys have to rep that? You mentioned every rep counts, and there's so much that has to go into it. How often do you guys work on it from spring through summer through fall? Well, the players kind of joke with me. They bust my chops. That It's all good. We, we all love each other. I know this. As long as I'm in coaching, every single day that we're on the field, we're going to work on what I call mate blocking, which is the zone blocking. Every single day that we're on the field, all the reporters, everybody that's out there, they always go. The first thing we do is we get into this situation right here. And then what we do is we provide them with, like you said earlier, Fran, what happens when the guy loops outside and the backer switches and they stem late? or they, And so every single one of those situations – we will provide them in the practice session. Now, in my younger days of coaching, okay, I used to do a lot of individual like shoot drills, board drills, individualized uh, blocking techniques, and I still do those kinds of things. you got to pick and choose what you want to be great at. You don't have all the time in the world to do these kind of things. So that's why the OTA session right now is when you kind of build your foundation with, with all this stuff. But so you have to choose what, in fact, is most important for your guys. And this is very, very important. So we're going to do this every day that we're out there. This play is being run to the tight end. So you see the safety there. And then you tell the guard, you tell Isaac, look, Isaac, that linebacker by trade, he should be taking his outside arm and he should be ripping across Isaac's face, trying to spill the ball out to the safety. Now, when I watch the film, I'm looking to see, is the linebacker doing a super great job of doing that? And if I say he's average at it or he's not, I see clips of it on film where you can take advantage of that maybe. And now you tell Isaac, Isaac, on the film, he's not consistent. All right, some teams, you play the Patriots, the New England Patriots, and I guarantee you that guy's going to take his arm and he's going to drive it through the face mask of 73 and spill it right to that safety. Now they have every single gap occupied. So you have to kind of see when you watch the film. So what I do is I watch every gap scheme play that's ever been run against the team before we decide we're going to run that play. Well, Coach, thanks so much for joining us here. Uh, again, gives giving us a little bit of insight into the difference between zone schemes, gap schemes. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll talk to you again soon. Same to you guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Great stuff there from Coach Stoutland. And again, that is a video-centric piece. So I would I would implore you guys, if you really like that, go and check that out. Thursday, May 21st, 12 Eastern Time, Coach's Masterclass. And look, for, for the, per the stuff that I included in this one, I did need you to rely a little bit on your mind's eye. But again, if you enjoyed it, make sure you go check that out when it drops on YouTube later this week. Speaking of YouTube, by the way, if you have not already, make sure you go check out the Goal to Go special that was done on Eagles legend John Dorenboss. Dropped last Friday. Really, really awesome stuff. If you don't already know John Dornboss's background, you've got to watch it. And if you do know his background story, I promise you that this show is going to reveal things that you didn't know before. There's exclusive stuff that is only that you know our group at Eagles Entertainment was able to get. Just an outstanding, outstanding segment. So make sure you go check that out on the Eagles YouTube page. You can go on PhiladelphiaEagles.com, the Eagles mobile app as well. So uh, just outstanding stuff. It's all available. Uh, go watch it whenever you're done listening to this podcast. All right. So we dove into a lot of scheme talk there, a lot of X's and O's with Coach Dotland, right? Well, let's talk now about traits and talk about the offensive line position as a whole. I was really, really happy to catch up with one of the best to ever do it down in St. Petersburg, Florida at the Shrine Bowl. Time for Will Shields. It's time for more Chalk Talk. Let's get down to business. It's time for Chalk Talk. 
Really excited to welcome in uh, a 12-time Pro Bowler and Will Shields. Will, uh, welcome to the show, man. Welcome to the Eagle Island Sky Podcast, fueled by Gatorade. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. So we're doing this uh, from the East West Shrine Bowl, and you're here uh, helping these guys. It's kind of like a, a mentor and a coach on the field. Tell, tell us what it's like uh, working with these guys one on one and getting on the field and working with them. Well, it's a lot of fun. You get a chance to actually see the new future of the NFL. Mm. See no, young guys that are coming in that are hungry to yep. get to the next level. Uh, but also, we have to tell them that it's you know it's not as easy as you think it is. Right. It's not everybody could do it. Sure. And also, you got to be that guy that's willing to say, "Hey, I'm I'm ready to try to take somebody's job." Sure. Well, what is there one area where when you're when you're working with these young guys, that kind of across the board is a pretty consistent thing? All right, I know we're gonna have to work with this this area of the game with this player. It's it's really footwork. Footwork is okay. the key because everybody comes from a thousand different systems. Yep. And they have their own way of doing it and different things of doing it. And then you put a specific offense in for this game, mm. and you're going, okay, how do I get them to sort of incorporate this into the new footwork and foot pattern? Mm. And what we call it is putting it in your toolbox. So okay. what we're trying to do is expand their knowledge base in a small relative time, but also give them enough information to make them dangerous. Mm. What does is, what is good footwork look like for an offensive lineman? I think a lot of people look for, all oh, this, this guy's explosive out of his stance or he's really light on his feet, but what does it look like on film or to the casual observer? Well, it's balance, power, and then understanding that we're negotiating space, and mm -hmm. I call it little things, little nuances, being able to move a guy off his, off his grass just enough to get the ball through because mm -hmm. that's all we need is, is an inch. We don't have to win every battle to win. We right. just got to tie. Right. Uh, sure. As long as we tie and tie it up, then we can get to the next level. And being able to understand that, you don't have to be the super explosion, throw a guy on the ground kind yeah. of guy. You could be a, hey, I just sort of moved this way, made him move over two steps, mm. just enough to get the ball through or just enough to get the pass off and things of that nature because it is a game of inches, and we have to understand our inches are just as important as anyone else's. Yeah, we, I, we've talked a lot about offensive line on this podcast, and one saying we've, we've used numerous times is uh, efficient hands or efficient feet allow for efficient hands. Talk about the relationship with uh, an offensive line when it comes to using their feet well and how that projects upward you know, to their upper body? Well, I actually use the process of saying you have to separate your hands from your feet. Ooh, okay. Like uh, that. Okay. Uh, because that. the simple fact of it is is that sometimes your feet will be in all different kinds of right. situations. You know, you, yeah. you'll get in trouble and everything else, but your hands can save you sometimes mm. and then vice versa. Yeah. Sometimes your hands get in trouble and your feet have to be in the yeah. right position. So you've sort of got to sort of unmarry them yeah. Uh, so you understand that, okay, I can't always punch off of this foot or this step or this thing because that's when people get timing on you. Right. And so, you know, you see us doing those drills where you're doing two-hand punch here, two-hand punch here. Game's not like that. Right. You're not, you know, if you're able to get a guy and punch him two hands in the chest and knock him backwards, yep. that guy's probably not that good. Sure. Because he's going to be shaking and shimmying and doing different things to keep you from getting there. So you always have to separate those two from each other to sort of get that balanced, unbalanced mm. feel so you understand how to actually fight your way through it. Yeah, we've made the comparison a lot from offensive linemen to playing defensive backs just because the unnatural movement of moving in reverse and guys that have, you know, you're going to get beaten by guys uh, on a daily basis in, in the NFL. So that ability to recover, how important that is both run game and pass game, how important is that for guys to be able to, you know, look, it's not always going to be pretty. you got to find a way to oh, win. We have that same fo that philosophy of get it done. Mm. Uh, we don't care how you get it done. It's ugly sometimes, but you have to do it. Yeah. Uh, there's times that you've actually been spun around backwards, and you're facing the quarterback still trying to block a guy before right. he throws the ball away. So that's one thing about it. It's not a pretty pretty, pretty sight, <laughs> but you got it done. Right. And, and I think that's where it sort of works. You have to sort of figure out what can you do to manipulate what he does well. Mm. And then once you can do that, you can become in the winner's column. So, you know, the way it is is like, you know what? That guy didn't just knock me over or whatever, but – my stat sheet only says I had two tackles. <laughs> I won. <laughs> that's the way it works. Sure. You know, and, and that's where it comes down to. Is there a, an area of the game of playing offensive line that you feel – is it talked about enough that is really, really important from a player standpoint? Yeah, I think it is. I think the simple fact of how we do pass protection and pass sets, okay. those things have to be sort of uh, well looked at and mm. so, sort of taken into bits and pieces. Like and, a schematic standpoint or like physical technique? Physical techniques. Gotcha, you have okay. to understand where you can separate certain things and certain people, mm. um, you know, or be able to teach the nuances of different kicks and different styles of what people teach and what they're using right now compared right. to what they used before. Right. Um, you know, it all comes back to the play of being able to use your hands more yeah. and each 
each year you've gotten more leeway of being able to use your hands. Mm. So that changes the style a little bit where when I first started in sixth grade, I had to actually have my hands gr uh, basically holding my pads right. before I could touch. So it was all elbows to a point to where you got to college and you can actually put them in front of you to where you got in the pros and you can actually grab and latch on and do different oh. things. So, you know, I've been through those eras of change and now it's even getting to, to more of, hey, let's get our hands on and now you got to get your head out of the game, sure. which is a whole different one because we used to have that thing. A guy's bull rushing you. Right. You headbutt him. Right. You know, you headbutt him to get out. I mean, that's just a roll it's of a things. different now. Yeah, right now. They'd be like, oh, no, you headbutt him. You're hurting yourself. Right. I was like, well, then how are you going to keep him from running you over? Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's interesting. You mentioned, so you played offensive line all, all grown up? Oh, yeah. Oh, Interesting. yeah. I, I, I'm a traditional offensive lineman. <laughs> I am not one of those hybrid guys that were, oh, I was a running back or tailback right. or whatever. I have never been able to say, hey, coach, I am going to be able to run the ball this year. Did you score a touchdown at all in your whole uh, career? Actually, I fell on the ball once in right. high school <laughs> on a guy that snapped it over the guy's head okay. into the end zone. <laughs> That's the only touchdown I have. Very good. And I did run the ball once. Okay. On How'd the fumble ruski. All right. Uh, I got to the three, okay. but, you know, it was pretty cool. I can't complain. It was the one time I actually had to play call for me to run right. and I did play fullback my my uh, rookie year uh, I mean, little you're fullback you were nine feet away from a touchdown I mean, that's yeah you know <laughs> I was always that guy you know I was either blocking for one or laying on the guy that just scored sure. one or something like that so I've, I've scored a lot right. just with other people yeah it's it's interesting just you know that's why I, when you said that you played offensive line in sixth grade because you see there's you know, so many so often um, I'm sure you've played with former teammates so all you know college D linemen even high school high school tight end high school quarterback that yeah. made the move uh, and now I feel like with offensive line play where it is in today's game teams are looking for all right you know this guy hey he played he played tight end or he played uh defensive line we, we but we feel like he can make that move exactly that's tough like to try and you it's, had years it, and years of training it's tough to be a traditionalist because <laughs> they're getting all these uh, these true athletes out here to play right. your position yep. uh and that's why you know that's why i think i like it that's why mm. i think it's cool because there's a lot of the little nuanced things yeah that if you didn't play it that long, you don't know. Right. Um, you know, it's just interesting. Even talking to the young guys out here, it's mm. just, you know, it's like, how did you know this? Or how did you do that? And I was mm. like, well, some of it came from practice. Right. Over and over and over. Or you get beat enough doing certain things. Sure. You learn to see what works. And mm. then you see all these different guys and different sizes and what they do. So you have to learn what you have to do to sort of win. Yeah. Right, so to take you out, I want to talk about uh, scouting and kind of uh, learning about the opposing defensive line you're going to go up against. Yeah. What is that like from a, you're watching a guy during the week trying to get a sense of how he's going to attack you as opposed to, all right, this is what I'm going to do to him, but knowing, like, all right, like he's going to be the aggressor to kind of start things off in pass, in pass rush. How do you kind of go about that, preparing for that? Well, I know they're creatures of habit. Okay. Plus, they, first of all, I go all the way to the coordinator of all what right. the coordinator does, where their lineage tree comes from, of where they learned all of their things that they do. Interesting. Because okay. everybody has that 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 sweet nugget of, oh, this defense always works for me. Right. You know, it's sort of like you say, hey, when I sleep with a specific blanket, I sleep better. Right, right. That's what coaches do. Coaches have their specific things that they do all the time that worked for them, mm. and so they sort of hang their hat on it when it, you know, when it becomes hard. And so then I go down and I study, you know, all my third down guys who I'm going to face, who I'm going to rush. I actually write them down in a book, yep. and then I take them and I put R and P, run and pass. So I see all the things they do on the run plays, and then I see all the things they do on the pass plays. Then I take the defense as a whole, and I see all the different things and who's cheating where and who's doing what and all that good stuff and then I actually take the guy and I see okay what little things that he do on specific plays and specific things because right. just like anything else we have our habits when, sure. when it becomes tough we go back to what we know right and so you know when that guy gets in that specific stance you're going okay I know that's coming right. and I know this is coming because they feel comfortable in it because they won with it before mm. Yeah, we talked with uh, with Willie a little bit earlier, and he just talked about you know having that primary move as a pass rusher, and then what it's like. Okay, you need that that complement. Just kind of preparing for that, and I'm, I'm sure there are guys that stand out to you from out the, throughout your career that. You know, they they had they had that primary move where you knew that, that that was coming, but then they also had that compliment to kind of back that up a little change up as well. They did, but what made it worse is the ones that had that primary move that you didn't know how to stop. Right. Who's, and, a, who's, and a, who's a good example well, of that? Well, if you think about it, you had Reggie White that had the hump. Yeah. You knew it was coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you knew it was coming. Uh, you just didn't know how to stop it or right. when it was going to come. And yep. then there was a guy named Jumpy Gathers. Okay. Uh, he had this move called the forklift. Yep. And he'd actually lift you up and carry you to the quarterback or what have you. Sure. And you're going, okay. I know it's coming. Uh, can I do this? Can I cut him? Uh, can I try to grab it? Can I do this? And next thing you know, he's got you by the belt buckle and he's carrying you back to the quarterback. You know, those are the those are the guys that had those unique things that you're mm. you're trying to. We call it just negotiate time enough to where the quarterback can get the ball off right. without him getting hurt. All right. So I've got one final question for you. Uh, young offensive linemen all around the NFL. You see them come in and they they've got to play early. 
and they struggle a little bit. And you, you almost have to you talk about negotiate. You have to, have to negotiate. Okay, what traits are we able to willing to say? Okay, we can forgive if he doesn't have this yet. He doesn't have the anchor yet, or he doesn't have the the mental processing yet. Is there an area though where you're like from a physical standpoint, like if he doesn't have this, he's not going to be able to play well in the NFL right now. Well, I think right now is the ability to understand pass protection. Mm. I mean, that's one piece okay. because we are going to a more pass-oriented yeah. uh, kind of thing. I think right now with uh, RPOs, run-pass options, and things of that nature, yeah. it's bringing it better to the college game of mm. college guys that can be here and play more. Yep. Uh, but if they could basically pass protect, I think they could make a very good, very long career here mm. in the NFL right now. Sure. That's for sure. Yeah, well, Willie, we really appreciate the time here on Chalk Talk on the Eagle in the Sky podcast fueled by Gatorade. Best of luck the rest of this week and hope to talk to you soon. No problem. I have great luck. I don't have to play. (laughs) Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Awesome stuff there from Will Shields. And there are a few things, right? A couple things that I kind of start as I was listening back to it. First of all, uh, I love the line, our inches are just as important as anyone else's. Look, I'm a big believer uh, in strength and power along the offensive line. Even though if you are uh, light and athletic, I'd still like to be able to see that explosive element, that powerful element. Uh, but I love that the fact that he said, look, you don't need to win every battle to win. You could just tie. I love the fact that he said our inches are just as important as everyone else's. I love that line. Um, I love the idea of having to separate your feet from your hands. Uh, I thought that that was really well said and talking about uh, how they need to rescue each other at certain times. You need that ability to recover. I've talked about that so often along the offensive line here on this podcast. You want to see those guys be able to recover. And if your hands and feet are working independently of each other, you've got more of an ability to do that. I thought that was really good, uh, really great stuff there from him. He talked about getting it done. It's going to look ugly sometimes, uh, but you have to be able to recover at times when you're initially beat. And then I love the idea, too, that he was an offensive lineman only. Yeah, really, it's so often. You can go back to all these guys, and you look at the, look along the Eagles' offensive line, uh, and you'll see a lot of examples of you know guys that weren't all, always offensive linemen. Maybe they were tight ends or linebackers or defensive linemen that you know kind of grew into the position and were kind of forced to play along the offensive line. Uh, that's kind of the state of where the game is and has been over the last, really, if you go back 20, 25 years, well, a lot of the top linemen in all of football have this. But Will Shields, an O lineman for life, did not know that about him. So great stuff from both Coach Stalin and from Will Shields, who you can follow just like I do on Twitter at WShields68. And while you're at it, I'm at FDuffy3. That's where I post all the podcasts I'm a part of and all of our X's Nose content that we produce at PhiladelphiaEagles.com. And you know, I greatly appreciate everybody that promotes this podcast on all forms of social media. That is one way to support the show, but the best way is to go into Apple Podcasts or Stitcher leave us a rating, even leave us a comment. I wanted to give a quick shout-out to somebody who did just that. Liberty Parent left a five-star review saying how much they loved the episode with Ross Tucker that we ran during the week of the NFL Draft. If you guys have not heard that, I know it was during draft week, so you might feel like, oh, it's timed out by now. Ross told some awesome, awesome stories uh, in that show about just what it takes to, to have success in the NFL off the field. He he told some stories about Tom Brady, about Ray Lewis, what it was like playing with and against those guys and why they were as great as they were. Sure, a lot of that is physical ability, but when you talk about mental approach and work ethic and, you know, competitive nature and things like that, some of that stuff really came through in the stories that Ross told. So make sure you go check that out just a few weeks ago here on the Eagle Eye in the Sky podcast fueled by Gatorade. So thanks so much to Liberty Parent for the review and the comment. And thanks to all of you out there for your continued support of this show and all the rest of our podcast offerings on PhiladelphiaEagles.com. That being said, I think that'll do it. Another show in the books here on the Eagle Eye in the Sky podcast fueled by Gatorade. For everybody here at the Duffy House, I am Fran Duffy. We will talk to you next week.